What's going on, you guys? And welcome back to another Team Mom 2 OG recap. This episode premiered on October 8th, starting off with Caitlin's surprise home from a therapy outreach program that she had been at for a couple of weeks or however long she had been there. So, Amber is home alone for the first time with baby James since Andrew headed back to work. Now, um, Gary's, at the time, fiance, because you know that this is pretty recorded. She mentions that she and Amber are in a good place now and they are getting along better than they ever have been. Also, Bristol expresses how hard it's been for her marriage having to see her husband suffer from PTSD and she's not happy in her marriage anymore. And then next there's Cheyenne. She's home with a baby and her sister and Zach. So they're just sitting around on the floor talking and Cheyenne, she's talking about her experience so far being a mom. And then she makes this comment about having another baby in the future. And Zach was like, come again. He was looking surprised, like rewind that because you just going on and on. And then she just got like this little attitude about her. Like, well, I, yeah, you heard me right. I say what I said. And he's up there looking like, well, where did that come from? Because I don't remember agreeing to having kids. So this is the expression that Zach is giving off in front of her sister. And so she said, and that was before her sister even said anything. I was like, so, you know, he's making it obvious that he'd never agree with having a baby with you because he's probably not even trying to be with you that long because he see the type of games that you play. And her sister was like, so how many times have this conversation come up about you wanting to have another baby? Because he seemed like this is all new to him. And she was like, he says it. We talks about it every time we doing it. And then she sounds so childish when she said that. And I'm like, so why would he even want to be with somebody like that? He's just in it for that run reason right there because they doing it. And she was like, as soon as the baby leave and go with Corey, every time they do it, like what? He always mentioned that he want to have another baby. Or, you know, that's just the talk that that's just what we do in bed. I mean, come on, girl. Come on. Grow up. Grow up. You really do think he want to have a baby with you and he see the type of games you play? He only in it for that one good thing and his little opportunity to be on TV right now. So, yeah. Anyway. And um, and then that's another thing. For me, Corey is around just a little bit too much more than he needs to be. But that's just my humble opinion. <laughs> so, Caitlin's back home and she's adjusting to being outdoors with the animals on their farm and everything. And... The producers asked her, how does it feel being back home? She said it feels pretty good so far. And she's just dealing with the anxiety every now and then. But she's like, everybody goes through a little anxiety every now and then. So that's kind of normal. Also, Amber says that she's in a happy place now for some reason. But some reason that she still feels depressed at times. She said that her therapist prescribed her medicine for her anxiety and panic disorder and everything that, you know, they felt like she needed to be taken. And it just had dawned on me that it just seems like this season is going to be dedicated to a much needed conversation on mental illness, which is well overdue. So Dakota told producers that he'll fight for Bristol as much as she fight for him. He'll do whatever it takes because he wants the best for both of them. And he just want to work it out. But he needs her to be understanding and show a little bit more sympathy towards what he's going through. And the producer asked him, but what do you want for you? And he said, I just want peace. And you know, Someone who struggles with depression for, you know, for so long, I, I understand what he mean by that. Because for a long time, if anybody was to ask me what I want, that's the only thing I can think of is peace. But I used to say, I just want peace of mind. I just want peace of mind. I mean, 
Like I say, I just feel so, so sorry for him. And I just already knew that he was going to say that. I can see it in his eyes that he's been through so much pain and he got so much pain inside of him. I just have a lot of sympathy for what he's going through. So Tyler pays another visit to the therapist again and she told him that she watches the show sometimes. She said the biggest thing that she noticed about him is that he carries the load on his back from everybody. She also advised him that maybe both he and Caitlin can come in for a session and she'll give them an assignment to watch the show together. And Tyler said something like, okay, well, that's something that we never did before, but you know, he was, he was all willing to do it and stuff. So that's something that he was considering and he was going to pass that on to Caitlin. So back in Macy's world, since there's a restraining order against Ryan for making a threat to Taylor and he's no longer allowed to come near them. So now his parents have to come and pick up Bentley. So when Jen came to pick up Bentley, Macy didn't even have the decency to speak to the lady. She told Taylor to tell her, well, tell her he's coming when we finish this, talking about, because she was helping Bentley with his homework at the time. And I'm like, she could at least show a little bit more maturity and go out there and talk to her because it's not like it's, you know, she's to blame for Ryan's threats. It's not like Jen or her husband is to blame for what their son did. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about Bentley and I'm pretty sure they don't want him to do anything as crazy as the threats he threw out there. They're going to make sure he don't do anything crazy and off the wall like that. But don't come at them like that because they're, you know, they're just the grandparents. Why was she acting that way towards Jen? Jen has always been like such a sweetheart in person since I've been watching the show. So I don't know, but I'm not surprised. I mean, it's Macy. And this is another sad moment with Bristol and Dakota. So they sent the kids upstairs so they can talk about getting a separation. And it don't really sound like Dakota wants to call the marriage off so quick. He sounded like he really wanted to work on it a little bit longer. But it just sounds like Bristol is completely done and Richard throwing a towel. But I like the conversation that they had because he said this just adds on to me feeling like a failure. This just piles more on to my depression and everything. And she was saying, you are not a failure. You're a great, you are a great husband. You are a great father. I just think that this situation between us is not good for the kids at the moment. And I think this is the best decision we can make for them right now. Because at the end of the day, it's about the kids. And she was like, I know that we both going to do what we need to do 100% for our kids, whether we're together or separated, but being separated will be the best thing for both of us right now and the kids. And, you know, I can, I really admire the way she respond to him when he said, this made me feel like a failure. Because he already had been mentioning that he felt like she just don't really understand what he's going through. And so I'm glad that she did explain it and on camera so people could see that she's just not like this monster of a wife that just don't care what it is that he was going through so yeah and um you know it's just something that you can also just look at him and see how hurt he is so amber's having a heart to heart with her new baby daddy andrew and she's telling him how grateful she is to have him in her life and that she hasn't been so happy in such a long time. And she just wanted to stay that way forever. And so, you know, just a whole lot of sweet talk. And it had him blushing from ear to ear. <laughs> and um, so Bristol's family is having a gathering. Well, everyone is in attendance for whatever reason. I think it's crazy. But anywho... <laughs> Corey and Cheyenne, or I'm sorry, I said Bristol's family. I meant to say Cheyenne's family are having some kind of barbecue get together. I don't know. 
I missed it for whatever the occasion was for. I missed it. I apologize for that. But Corey and Cheyenne are talking. And he told her that he told her dad that Zach lives in the house with her. And she was like, at first to me, she didn't even really seem to care. Because to me, she was kind of laughing at it. Like, it's just, she comes off as a person that just enjoy all this kind of attention. That just make her look like, you know, the world revolves around her. You know, and she just can have it her way. And so, like I said, I just think she's full of game. She's playing him and she's playing um Zach. So she go and say, well, let me go and talk to him and see if it's not too late to say my name. And she's laughing and everything and he laughing and all of this kind of stuff. So she went to approach her daddy about it and he said that he didn't approve of it. And she quickly flips the script, storms into the house like a little child having a tantrum. You know, that just goes to show how much she just got a lot to grow up about. She got a lot of growing up to do. I'm just not feeling her at all. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't sugarcoat nothing about it. Not right now. I mean, she'll probably grow on me later on in the show. But for right now, I ain't really feeling her. And I'm sure when her dad said that he loved her with conditions... He meant the fact that he don't love some of the things that she do. But of course he loves his child fully and completely. He just don't love some of the decisions that she's made in her life at being such a young a young lady. And just to backtrack for a minute. They were together in a car. Cheyenne and Corey. And she said he was taking her to run errands. And I'm like, why don't she have her own car? I mean, it just seemed like they always together. Just a little bit too much than they need to be on the show. So, um, Taylor and Macy are sitting around talking about the situation with Ryan. And I don't know. It's just something that's going to get real old to me real soon. It's going to get old to me. I'm already like two seconds from being over the whole Ryan thing. And so... Tyler, he talks with Caitlin about the both of them going to go see a therapist for the session. And Caitlin completely shuts down the idea because she said it's going to make her look like a bad person when she's gone away to the rehab facility for, you know, whatever it is to make her get better. It's going to make her look like she's abandoning her family and using therapy as an excuse to get away from adult responsibilities. So, and I'm watching her and when she's telling Tyler this, it I don't know. It just seems like that he just completely went into a place of hopelessness regarding their situation. I mean, I don't know. Maybe things will change on next week's episode. But anyway, this concludes my recap of tonight's Team Mom OG. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. And I'll talk to you soon.